Okay. We're waiting for ding number two? Is that right? Yes, ding two. On air. You're on air. Go! Oh. Hi, everyone. Today we're talking about... This is the raw truth about entrepreneurship, and today we are talking about... What are we talking about, guys? We're talking about taking the next step. We had... I don't know. We, we, we kind of uh, have this tendency to talk a lot about taking a big leap and, you know, taking a giant uh, uh, step forward and then, you know, having faith and courage and all this and all this sort of, uh, you know, really inspiring talk. But a lot of people don't talk about what to do after that. So uh, today we're joined by Mike Rostowski. Mike, what's up? Hey, what's up? This is Mike Rostowski, the men's coach. I'm happy to be here. And... We are joined by our lovely guest, Pace, from Kelly.com. And Pace, what do, you, what, do you, what do you do? What do you do in the world? I help spiritual entrepreneurs bridge the practical and the profound. That's amazing. Pace has, a, has an awesome blog, which she's in the process of changing right now, but I highly recommend you check out her work. We're going to get into more of what, what Pace does today, but let's, let's talk about taking... The next step, Mike. This was kind of your your idea. What do you uh, What do you think the next step is all about? Like, why Why is this important? Um, so I think it's important. One, it was important for us, right? So we we just put this out to the world last week. Um, got a ton of really positive feedback, um, which you know, which helps us go forward. But then, you know, taking the first steps actually. It's it's hard, right? And you have to overcome fear. But then after that, you're like, ah, now what? You know, and um, so this is about you know incremental steps. Um, my one of my teachers, Martha Beck, she um, she talks about turtle steps. Um, so you know, oftentimes we we want to go from taking our coaching program to being a six figure coach in in six months. Um, but you know, it's it's slow incremental gains. Um, you know, slowly growing yourself and um, and and there's something about that second step because um, I I would guess that of the people who take the first step, I would guess a good majority of them probably don't take that second step. So um, so you take the first step, you you throw a blog post out, and then you're like, oh man, no one read my blog, you know, th this is a failure. Um, or you throw some product idea out there without doing any market research, without even, you know, even figuring out if there's a need for your product. And you just throw it out there like, ah, oh, no one bought it, I'm just going to scrap it, even though it's a really good product and, and it's really needed in the marketplace. Um, so let's just have a discussion around Taking the second step, taking the second step, and the and the third step, and um, maybe you know, like mentally, what uh, you know, like what kind of reframes or what you know, what kind of inspiration um, can we give to our audience to help them take that second step? Mm. Well, my second step was a step backwards. Can I share my story about that? Yeah. Yes, please. So I got so excited about my first step. I turned in my notice to my day job. I said, I'm going to quit my day job. I'm going to do what I love for a living. We're going to make it happen. And I, I I turned in my notice. I said to my boss, all right, this is it. I, I gave a pretty long notice. I'd been working at that job for like a, a decade. So I gave, I think, uh, six months notice. And then it's like, all right, go. I've got enough savings to make this work. And we've got three months, so let me build a business and have it become profitable enough to pay the bills in three months. And so I hit the ground running and worked really hard and started learning everything that I needed to know and found out that building a business takes time, uh, especially when you're starting from, from basically nothing yeah. and not even having, having any kind of audience. And so I went back to my boss and said, "Ah, oh, can I stay on halftime instead? And he said, sure, Pace, you can stay on halftime. Um, because at my, boss, at my job, at my day job, I had basically become a linchpin, so I had some leverage there. And the, um, you know, the second step there was I got together with my family and we looked at our budget for our personal expenses and we cut our spending in half so that I so that we could live off of half income from me working half time at the day job 
and that um, after it, 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 we felt the pinch for a little while, but after a couple of months, <clears throat> it didn't really matter anymore. It's like, all right, we we became used to the new way of spending things, right. and what was previously normal was like, whoa, why did we ever waste so much money before? And that gave us the space to take a bunch of turtle steps, to take the second step and the third step and the fourth step in our own space and our own time without having this uh, this pressure of the ticking clock. You've got to hurry up and do it right now. Cool. By the way, I just wanted to mention, we're talking about the next steps, and if you have any questions or you know, just thoughts on, on what the next step means for you and uh, and you want to share with us, we, you can go to paidtoexist.com forward slash show and there's a comments box on there and if we have time toward the end of this, we'll, we'll take a couple of questions. So I just want to put that out there if you're watching this right now, but I, I love that I love that story, Pace, just because I think sometimes we get so excited and like we give everyone this impression that if you just take that giant leap, then it's all going to be different. Yeah. And the truth is there's some stuff that comes after that. And, and what I often find, what I think, you know, sabotages people a lot of times is they take that first giant step or that big leap and then they get scared and then they're, that riskiness of taking those leaps kind of gets like uh, squashed a little bit or constricted a little bit and then people start trying to play it as safe as possible because they're like, oh, now the pressure is on and now I need to really perform. So they start doing things that are like comfortable, predictable. And that's where I find people kind of, you know, fall down is, is after taking that big leap. Well, the, the truth is I think you have to keep taking those, those risks and you can do it in a way where you're, you're mitigating those risks. But I think, you know, that's an, that's an important, uh, lesson for me after quitting my job. I, I feel like I started to get a little bit too safe because I started to look at like, oh, now I really need to perform. Mm -hmm. What are all the things that have worked before and how can I just keep doing more of those things? So that, I don't know, that, that's, that's one of the things that really uh, spoke to me about taking the, the next step. Yeah, um, I just realized I I, I didn't even plan on talking about this, but um, when I launched, I I launched my coaching practice at the beginning of this year, and I started taking paid clients. So um, when I left my corporate job at the end of 2011, I told myself I'd take a year off just to do stuff that made me happy. So I, you know, traveled the country doing volunteer work and tons of pro bono clients. Um, and then I, in the first month in January, I launched a pay what you can afford program. And I made thirty-two hundred dollars, and I was like, "Sweet, that's you know that covers my expenses for living this crazy, awesome nomad life. Um, I'm gonna be good. Like, there's no way I'll make less money than that for the rest of my life." Um, and the month after, I I actually made like a third. I made like eleven hundred dollars. Um, and 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 since then, of course, it's 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 you know it's incrementally climbed, and now you know everything I you know throw my attention at makes money. But there was a definite dip, um, and and there's a book, there's a book called The Dip. I haven't read it, but I know it's highly recommended. I want to say, book, yeah. I want to say it's Gay Hendricks, maybe, but um, Seth yes. Godin. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, Seth yeah. Godin. Same. Yep. <laughs> um, whatever. whatever. The, Same people. Really, really smart guy who wrote this book, um, and right. yeah. So it's I in some of the blogs, you know, and motivational speakers and 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 I say stuff like that too I'm like just leap and then that will appear and that's true mm -hmm. like like that is a hundred percent true um, but at the same time like there's gonna be a little dip where you're not just gonna instantly be a success and everything's gonna start coming away you might right you might be really lucky or you might hit a market that's just totally underdeveloped or you might just have that personality that people are like oh my god I want to give you my money um, but you know in general after you take that first step, you know, the, there's going to be a little bit of a dip. So, um, yeah, I didn't plan on sharing that today, but, yeah, it just kind of came came to mind. Mm. The, the leap in the net will appear thing is, like, it's, it's true 
that everything will be okay. But it's not true that everything will be okay in the way that you expect it to be okay. <laughs> you know, it's true that you will always be loved and you will always be worthy of love and that, you know, like your, your soul and your heart will be okay. But does that mean that you're going to always make as much money every month as you want to? No, because there's factors there that are outside of your control. So I think that it's when you when you take these deep spiritual teachings and you apply them to the material world is when you can get tripped up. Mm. Can you uh, can you say more on that pace? So well, yeah, it's like manifestation. You know, it's like oh okay, you know I'm going to visualize a million dollars and it's going to appear. No, that's not how it works. You can you you, you don't create Come on. You, you create your own reality. But you create your own spiritual reality, and then that overlays on top of the physical world. You know, if I'm if I'm going to create a reality full of abundance and love, and um, like meaningful work, then that will certainly lead to money. But it's when you when you skip when you skip past the emotional and spiritual reality and go straight to I'm just gonna s skip that abundance and love and meaningful work and just I just want the money I just want a check to appear in my mailbox then that uh, that doesn't that doesn't engage the gears of the universe that you you're missing like a layer there mm. right so Wait, when you're but... taking the next step don't don't skip don't try to skip a bunch of, of steps right Right. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely think of times when I've tried to do that in the past where I've thought like, oh, it'd be great. Like I remember creating vision boards and I actually made them in like Photoshop and then made them as like my desktop wallpaper on on the background of my computer. And I remember putting things like exorbitant amounts of money like in my bank account. I would take a screenshot of my bank account and then change the amount. And I would focus on that, right? That was the main thing I was focusing on, not really my beliefs about money, not really how money made me feel, not really uh, how I was showing up in the world to receive in a, in a greater way and give in a, in a bigger way. I was just kind of focusing on what is that, what is that end result without really experiencing it in, in every level. I think it's kind of... It's kind of similar to um, focusing on making a movie, but the only thing you're doing is writing the script or something. You're not, and you're not. You don't care about the actors. You don't care about, you know, how it's going to be shot. You're just thinking about how it's how it's written. And there's a lot more, obviously, that goes into it too. Your life is like a movie. If you're just thinking about what are those little details of the end result of what I want. It, it's you're kind of uh, abstracting reality to this really small, narrow, you know, piece of it. Yeah, L let me run with the movie example. So, say you, say you want to create a movie, and all you envision is the end result. You imagine the opening night of your movie and a packed theater and the previews play, and ta-da! It all happens. Well. Uh, you know, it is, it's good to visualize that, but what it's going to take to get you to that point is, uh, you know, writing the screenplay, doing the acting, doing the casting, mm -hmm. doing the directing, like all of those things that are in the middle. And if mm -hmm. you don't love doing that stuff in the middle, or at the very least, if you don't understand and make peace with doing all those things in the middle, then you won't get to that end result. And mm -hmm. like visualize the middle, not the end. You know, if you want to write a book, visualize sitting down and writing. If you want to build a business, visualize the the, the tasks that it's going to take you. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the networking, the content creation, the mm -hmm. the the, the, the mm -hmm. learning. Like visualize the work, and you'll get to the end end goal. I mean, of course, keep the goal in mind, but you've got to visualize the middle if right. you're going to get to the end. Right. If you want to climb up Everest, you can't just be thinking about, oh, it's going to be so great when I see that view on the top. You need to be thinking about, like, I am going to love taking every step 
up the way. I'm going to love preparing for this trip. It's going to be great, like exciting. It's going to be scary as hell too, obviously, um, being in that kind of environment that just crushes human life. Um, but really taking that seriously, and I think it's it's kind of, I think what we're kind of talking about here is really respect, right? Respecting the art of being an entrepreneur, of putting your gifts out there, of, of doing the work to be vulnerable, to show up and offer your value and say, you know, this is what I have to give. You know, does anyone, does anyone want this? Does anyone care? That, that requires so much more than just writing a, a vision statement or something. That's, that's great to do that and to think about that. But if you stop there, you're just, and then, and then what I would find too is like, I would, I would create that, that statement of what it is that I want. And then I wouldn't, like my actions, the, my, my beliefs wouldn't be aligned with that. My feelings wouldn't be aligned with that. Even though I kept trying to repeat that phrase or that affirmation, I, and I wanted to believe it so much, the, in the back of my mind, I knew it was bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Because I wasn't doing the things that I knew were going to bring me there. I would see the things show up, and then I'd be like, no, I just need to focus on this mantra, and it'll, it'll be all good, right? And... Sometimes, most of the time, I don't think it's that that, that simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say um, there's a level of be specific with your ask as well. Yeah. Um, so I I have a friend who told me this. He did a lot of men's work <laughs> and really built up his his confidence in what he wants in a woman. And he wrote this list like this is exactly what I want. This you know I mean. And and he found that woman. I mean, the the story is nuts. And and she she even walked up to him and like said like what he thought she was gonna say. And and he was in a, I think a partnership with her for a bit. But then he was like, whoa, there's stuff that I don't want here. <laughs> and then you know, so then then you can kind of, and then he refined his list. And then he was like, all right, this is this, this is exactly what I want. Um, so if you say yeah, I I want to run a six figure online business, like that's. All right, what else? You know, do you want to work a hundred hours a week? Do you want to um, be in front of a laptop all the time? Um, do you want do you want some movement in your life as well? Um, is there room for love, like in terms of a, a partner and kids? Um, where do you live? Um, what's your ideal day? You know, like how do you start your day? What's your morning routine? Um, how do you break up work? Um, what work do you do, and what work do you delegate to a virtual assistant or to a web designer or to a videographer? And, um, so I mean, I, so there's a lot of things, and um, I think it's it's obviously good to have kind of a kind of an overall goal because that's that's that you know vision or purpose that that helps you you know push forward and that helps you make decisions. But um, at the same time, the the more specific you are with your ask and the more specific you are with like what I really desire, um, one you know like you'll have a better chance of getting it, and two if if you tell other people, then like people want to help you, you know. So if if you know you say um, I am going to be the queen of green smoothies, and you you know oh, I'm gonna you know put my foot you know I'm gonna put my flag down, and then people are like oh yeah you know like um, you know Jessica's the queen of green smoothies, and then it just kind of builds from there. So like whatever you want to be, it's and and as you can see from the show and from hopefully like from the stories that you're hearing about all of our businesses, like we are sort of making it up as we go and. Um, and you know, and we're constantly learning and refining and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work. Um, so yeah. Hmm. I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up, Mike, because I think uh, people are often surprised when they hear about an entrepreneur or someone that has a successful business that has been doing something for a long time. They hear about them being scared or them failing or you know their life falling apart and it's easy to look from the outside and think oh well they they have all their shit together but it's actually they are where they are oftentimes because they've been broken and because they've fallen apart so many times they've had the courage to take those lessons and then you know fuck some things up again <laughs> and and you know have learn learn again learn what you know, are some new things that work and then, you know, mess it up again. And that I think is one of the 
one of the dangers after you take that big leap is, you know, like I said, being afraid of, of failing after that. And you start, you start comparing your, your beginning, you know, to someone else's end or, or where, where they are in their journey. And you're like, oh, well, where I should be is right here. Why, why am I not there yet? Why, why aren't things working the way I want it, I want it to? And that was a huge, huge lesson for me. I'm, I'm like just now at the, the stage I am in my business getting really good about not comparing myself to other people. And really, it came through accepting myself and learning to celebrate other people's successes mm -hmm. and learning to just like love everyone's you know successes and failures no matter what rather than looking at it and being like, oh, what did I do? How, how, do, how do I measure up to this person? And that takes a long time, especially if you have been comparing yourself to other people your whole life. You know, give yourself a break. If you're, if you're trying to take that, that next step forward, or even that first step forward, just, I just encourage you to give yourself a little bit more compassion um, and allow yourself to be where you are. You're only going to be in that place. Like, that's beautiful. You're only going to be in that place once. And why not just embrace that beginner, you know, beginnerness uh, completely? And in yeah. addition to, oh, go ahead, Mike. Um, oh, no, I was just going to say, um, just really quick, and then you can jump in. Um, I love that you said beginner's mind. Um, so yeah. no matter how much like growth work I do or spiritual work or um, no matter how much money I make, I, I always walk into any situation in front of like anyone like I'm a like I'm a kindergartner or like I know nothing or um, I uh, I did I went to like a one taste uh, retreat so it's like the work of uh, Nicole Dato and she wrote a book called Slow Sex and um, I did some of their work last week, and I could have gone in like, like, oh, like I know all this stuff about you know sexual yoga and practice, but I just like completely as if I knew nothing, as if like I, as if I just absolutely knew nothing. And um, anytime I talk to anyone too, like at a at a conference or anyone when I host a meetup, I'm I'm legitimately so happy to talk to them and and see what gifts that they have to share for me and. Um, you know, even if they're working a corporate job, or you know, even if they mm -hmm. just even even if their life's a total mess, like there's something that I I always gain from every person. And you know, there's that saying that you know, it's like when the when the student is ready, the the teacher arrives. And um, I mean, these people come into our lives for a reason. Um, even even our even our our villains, like the like the guy who like really triggers you, or you know the the person who sends you hate mail on your blog just just for being yourself, just for being paid to exist, or um, you know our parents or our kids, like they're there for a reason. They're there to you know teach us the lesson of like unconditional love and like not being attached to the outcome. And um, yeah, I, I I really like what you said about um, the you know it's the things that like cause us pain. You know, most of us are running these businesses because of a villain in our life, like mm -hmm. because of a really crappy boss, or uh, because of our our husband who left us, or because of our, our dad who never told us that. You know, he said that we we never amount to anything, and um, yeah, and we kind of have them to thank for being here, and, like living this this life of freedom, because they you know they pushed us to be a better version of ourselves. So, mm -hmm. all right, pace. Yeah, I think there's a, an especial danger in comparison when you are exposing yourself to a lot of marketers because you're comparing <laughs> your, oh, yeah. your insides with their like slick, professional, polished outsides. And like there's, mm. a, there's a phrase that my friend Catherine Kane uses, which is glide like a swan, paddle like a motherfucker. Because like you see the swan just gliding along the pond, but underneath it's like... <laughs> You're like, I'm just paddling their little ass off. <laughs> and, and, like, that's what it's like to be an entrepreneur. It's like, I'm gliding, I'm gliding, everything's cool, everything's cool, but then underneath it's like, paddle, 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 paddle. Right. Uh, and so, you know, like, you, you, you often don't see the paddle 
the, of other people because they, mm -hmm. you know, they're trying to, to put on a good face, like everything's going fine, business is great. And sometimes people will come forward and, and you know, being vulnerable. But you don't know what it's like for them emotionally. You don't know if they're freaking out all the time. You don't know what it's like for them financially. There are yeah. a whole bunch of people who are, you know, famous in our entrepreneur circles who aren't actually making any money. They just have lots of followers and everybody thinks that they must yeah. they must be rich if they're that famous. Right. So so yeah, I I just want to second what Jonathan said about comparison that um, you know, only you know what it's like to be you and focus on being the best you that you can, not the not a crappy imitation of somebody else. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I think another thing that can be helpful is really I don't know, like really realizing and ex and embracing this reality that not a lot of people are spending a lot of time thinking about what you're doing. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. You know? There's such freedom in that. I, I, how much time do you spend on your Facebook profile versus someone else's? <laughs> you know? <laughs> or your Twitter stream versus someone else's? Or your inbox? I mean, you'd have to hack in other people's inboxes, I guess, but you know. <laughs> How much time do you spend on your profile versus other people's? You might spend some time re reading, responding to people, but I bet most of us, and myself included, look at their profiles and like, hey, did anyone like this? Like, did anyone respond to this? So just remembering that I think is so liberating because you you realize all the time you're thinking, what are other people thinking about me? What are other people thinking about me? People are. Everyone else is like, what are other people thinking about me? What are other people thinking about me? <laughs> and it's just like, do whatever the hell you want because no one no one cares that much anyway. Yeah, wasn't there um, a woman at the first WDS? I, I think it was WDS, but someone, I recall someone stood up and said, you know, in my in my 20s, I used to care about what people thought about me. And then in my, in my 40s, I, I stopped caring what they thought about me. And then in my 50s, I realized they were not even thinking about me at all. And, <laughs> and I think it's just that, yeah, just that, that realization that, I mean, no, no one cares about you, even, even a fraction as much as you care about yourself. I and mean, we're, people are busy raising their families and running their businesses. And, you know, so, so as you, as you micromanage every, every letter of your perfectly copywritten status update, which I do sometimes, <laughs> you know, it's like, no one, like, no one cares. Like, no one cares at all. Yeah. So, um, there's a, there's a question actually, which maybe, uh, I'll, I'll read it and either of you guys can take it from Teresa Capaldo. And it says, um, around, you know, keeping the momentum of dialing every day and doing the, the tweets, the blog posts, the posts, etc. How do we keep doing this without burning out? Um, especially if we have a few clients and not a lot of money coming in and not a lot of followers. Mm. I'll, I'll jump in first. Yeah. Um, I think getting really clear on what motivates you is the first step to that. Um, and like Mike was talking about earlier, a lot of this got into self-employment because of a villain. And there's two basic kinds of motivation. There's, there's, there's toward and away from. There's love and there's fear. And either one can motivate you, but I believe that only the toward motivation, the, only the love kind of motivation is really sustainable because juicing yourself up on fear a lot can really burn you out. Mm. So, um, what helps me to stay motivated, even when I'm in the dip, the dip, uh, is to remind myself of why I'm doing it, and having that having that external validation of getting clients and getting money and getting followers is really good. But you can't count on that every day. So I've got to take responsibility for my own motivation. And that means that whenever anyone says something inspiring, I write it down and I put it in a place where I can go look at it when I'm feeling like crap and I'm feeling like I don't really want to do the work today. It means that 
I need to really get in touch with why I am doing this work and find a reason that I would want to do at least some piece of the work just for me, even if nobody was listening. And then I need to like remind myself of that by, you know, the little like desktop backgrounds and hanging reminders and mantras and um, and habits and the ways that we just remember what's true, even when we're tempted to forget it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I would I would add to that. You know, I think I think there's this idea that you in order to be successful online or to be a, uh, a a great entrepreneur you need to be keeping tabs of everyone and everything and you need to be responding to every email every tweet every Facebook you know post or you know that's and comments that people leave uh, and we have these people like Seth Godin and Chris Gillibo that like Harold I respond to every single email and I think that can be good uh, but it gives this idea that in order for you to be on top, you need to be responding to everything, and that's that's not true. I I, th I think you know if if being if do, trying to do that is getting you overwhelmed and it's getting in the way of you offering your gifts fully, it's getting in the way of you giving your energy to people and and showing up with love and you know with courage and with you know this desire to to create things from your heart if it's getting in the way of that which is better you responding to every single comment and not feeling very good about it or you missing a few comments or a few replies but you're able to offer your gifts fully and create from your heart and you know in, maybe you show up in like 50% of those interactions. Maybe you choose, mm -hmm. you don't do Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. You just do Facebook. You know, you choose the one that resonates with you the most. You tell people, this is where I hang out. If you want to hang out with me, come over here. And you just, you scale things down a little bit, but you increase the amount of energy that you're able to show up with. I think that can be really powerful. There's this idea that we need to be everywhere to be successful in and I think it's better if you show up in one place that you're like really strong and really powerful and and, and focus on that but I know I know Mike you you have some experience with this like you tend to hang out on Facebook I, I tend to hang out on Facebook and uh, what, what do you think about that like do you think that you need to keep up with like every every little tweet every little comment every no, Facebook message um... every invite <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I, I think it's like do what um, – life is art, right? So it's – everything is balanced. There's no right or wrong. So some, someone might say, oh, do the, do the social media fast challenge. You don't need it. And someone might be like, but I built my business using Facebook or you know, I built my business on, on Twitter. Um, it's, I, I just wrote a blog today, and I just posted it like half an hour before, and I forgot. Like it's called. Oh wait, it's my life, and <laughs> and I think that's that's the same thing for you. I I personally like Facebook because it's it's very interactive. Um, I crowdsource my life. Like if there's any time I don't know something, any question or something that comes up, and there's something if I'm stuck with one of my coaching clients or um, if I need a good recommendation for like a webcam, I just throw it out to the world, and um, I'm really lucky to have this huge tribe of like authors, coaches, and entrepreneurs. Um, so for me, Facebook works. Um, for other people, Twitter works. Um, there's, I I would say at this point, I I could probably scale back a, li a little bit, and I could be building more. Um, I know Jonathan and I were talking on one of our recent calls. Uh, there's a metaphor that my friend Matt Horwitz gave me, and I, I love it. So just you know, open up your ears. Um, so just as in breath, there's a balance of the inhale and the exhale. Um, there's a balance of inspiration and execution. So think of inhaling as as inspiration. Mm, like you're you're taking yeah. in blogs. You're you're at WDS. You're you know you're hanging out with your friends and um, you're going to Burning Man and you're going to Awesomeness Fest and South by Southwest and with all these juicy people and you're 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 literally like full of love and um, inspiration. Um, 
and then there's there's execution with that fullness. Ah, then you then you bring that into your work. You know, you 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 write something or you create a a group coaching program. You know, you write a book or um, you create some badass workshops or or events. Um, and and it's a balance. So um, there's a lot of people, including myself, um, sometimes where I think I'm out of balance, where I'm taking too much in in terms of um, inhalation. I I'm kind of an experience whore, and I I'm a seven on the on the enneagram, which means I I want to do it all. Um, and and I'm getting much much better at balance. But um, so you know, there's there's some of us, and I think Jonathan, we we were talking where where I might be a little more of an inhaler, trying to take it all in. You know, I know you can share your story. I, I think you said you were more yeah, just more like an exhale. the really just more straight, of an exhale, yeah, just straight exhale, just putting stuff out, putting stuff out, which is how you built your business, and it's. And it's great, yeah. but you know, it's um, it's a balance of you know, kind of receiving love, receiving good energy, and then sending that back out into the world. So I, I would you know, take a look at yourself, you know, for for everyone who's who's watching um, as Jonathan closes the window because we're live on the internet. We're live on the internet, folks. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, so, so yeah, so, so take a look at your life and think like, man, am I just taking in, taking in all this good stuff? Or like, am I just working, working, working? Have I not seen a human being in 14 yeah. days? Like, that's a problem too, so. Mm. Yeah, and that, that sounds like trying to do a lot, like to what Teresa was talking about, like trying to do so much inhalation, trying to take it in, take it in, take it in, keep up with this feed, keep up with that feed, keep up with this stream, look at this Facebook group, look at this. And that's so much inhalation. Um, but you have to be focusing on like, what do you create? Like, what are you creating for yourself? What are you creating for the world? Like, and it's it can be hard sometimes when you want to give to so many people and when there's so many amazing people in your life or they're like every single one of the Facebook groups you're in like is awesome and you you just want to be there all the time um, you know what's funny Jonathan what I, I read Teresa's question as the opposite I read it as I'm I'm putting so much out there but mm. I'm not feeling inspired and I'm getting burned out so I guess I, there are I, two I think sides it could of, go either way yeah it could go either way maybe it's like hyperventilating like <laughs> 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 Um, um, yeah, no, I was, I was there. Yeah, I was, I was more on, on, on pace the side of this. Which, again, there's no right or wrong answers to life. But you know, maybe Therese, like maybe you just need to like get some sleep, or maybe you just need to like sit in a park and journal one day, or maybe you should like see your go and hang out with your best friend or your kids for four hours and totally unplug and don't even think about the the people that you have to send stuff out to online. Um, mm. I know at least two of us are Martha Beck fans, so I will quote Martha Beck, and she said, um, if you want to succeed financially in the new world of work, you need to rest until you feel like playing, play until you feel like resting, and never do anything else. I dig it. If you're feeling burned out, rest. If you're feeling like your work is not lighting you up, then try to find a way to make your work feel more like play. Yeah. I've been testing that out a lot. Uh, I think Mike introduced me to that that concept of uh, playing and resting. And at first I was like, that's not possible. <laughs> yeah, no, me there, too. There's no way. You me can't too. just play all the time. I mean, I mean, you know, resting is fine. I, I accept that. That makes logical sense. Uh, your body needs rest, but like play all the time, I, it just doesn't seem doesn't seem realistic. What what's what's your experience like? You you pace. It seems like you had that that first response too. Like, did you start testing that out to see if it could really if it could really work for you? Yeah, uh, you know, I made a vow long ago that I would rather be happy and fail than make myself miserable trying to succeed. You know, I'm, I'm mm. in business because I want to do what I love for a living and being stressed out all the time is not what I love. <laughs> it's far from it. 
So, but I had to actually make that a sacred vow because I just get into the grind and like, oh no, gotta work, gotta work. So that that rest and play mm. philosophy really challenged me, and um, I think just sort of like tying it back to what we were saying earlier about um, about being sure to visualize the right things. It's 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 a lot about resting in a nourishing way instead of um, like vegging out. So mm. if all you, if, if if what rest and play means to you is watch a bunch of TV and then play a bunch of video games, then that's that's not going to help you succeed financially in the new world of work. But if resting is uh, you know sleep and nourishing spiritual practice and spending quality time with people you love, and then if play is creating some new content because you love writing about it or hanging out on a video show with some of your friends or and and happening to share it with the world because we're talking about interesting things like you can turn you can turn this into play you can find something that's fun and then twist it in a way that that makes it um, of service and helpful to people as well Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, literally everything I do, it's it's play. Like I, um, I threw a after party for two hundred people at WDS with uh, Manish Sethi, just because we we were just talking about it on Facebook chat, and we're like, yeah, there's there's no there's no place for where people can go afterwards. Um, let's throw a party. So we scouted some venues, threw it, threw an awesome party. It was, you know, until like 3.30 in the morning. Um, made a little bit of money. Like not, our goal certainly wasn't to go in to make money, but I mean, that was just complete play. One of the funnest nights of my life. Made like a little tiny bit of money and it was just, you know, not that much work, just just a little bit. Um, I, the, the fun thing about diving into entrepreneurship and um, I feel really, really grateful for um, just having all of you um, as I've been, you know, kind of tra traveling the world for the past 18 months is that when you when you talk to an entrepreneur or someone, I mean, any kind of entrepreneur, like, they just, they see opportunities in places that just, just don't exist and they just make money out of thin air. I mean, sometimes I'll be sitting with some friends at a bar or over breakfast and and we'll play games like, all right, let's, let's make a business, like, with this sugar shaker here or you know like that's you know if if we had to make a hundred thousand dollars in the next 30 days how would we do it and just we come up with ideas and ideas and we're, and we're jamming and it's like oh like we could probably definitely do that um, and I think there's something very powerful as as I talk about this it's really about creating um, it's about creating and like using those pieces of of your brain that that you might have shut off years ago because you um, someone told you that you weren't a good artist, mm -hmm. or you told yourself that, oh, you know, like I, like I, I can't sing, I can't dance. Um, if you if you ask a room full of kindergartners how many of them can sing, all of them raise their hands like, yeah, I can sing. And then you know, if you ask some sixth graders, maybe it's less. And if you ask a group of college students, like maybe only one or two. You know, the ones who are music majors or um, the you know the ones who actually study vocal practice. Um, so I mean. Like anything is within you. Like whatever you want to be is within you. You you just have to give yourself permission to do it. So let me tell a story about that for me. Uh, so I love learning. You know, if we're talking about the inhale exhale, I love to inhale books and classes and everything I can get my hands on. And uh, you know, this is I think like four years ago I had created a course. And um, you know, it was an e-course, and people were taking it. It was going pretty well, but people were losing interest partway through, and they were dropping out. So I said, "Oh, I really want to learn how to become a better teacher. I want to learn how to create more engaging e-courses. So how do I learn this?" So I did the usual thing and like looked for an information product or an online class I could take, but I, there wasn't anything. So I said, "All right, well, I'm, I've taken some classes." from really good teachers, classes I really enjoyed. And I know them enough 
that they would probably consent to be interviewed by me. So I interviewed six people about how to create engaging e-courses. I recorded it and then I sold it as an information product called Engaging E-Courses, helping other people do the exact same thing. So this is just an example of how the, like my love of learning plus like recording it and slapping it on a sales page created some income for me and I was just playing. I was just having the time of my life interviewing these people. Yeah, and, and and I would add to that too, like Pace, like even if you only like I don't know how, how many copies you sold, even if you only sold two copies, it's like let's say you made a hundred dollars, sweet. You you made a hundred dollars to learn how, like one how to create a e product, two to get all this like free wisdom from you know, like subject matter experts in the area, just like win, 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 win all the way around. Yeah, I would have paid money to learn that, but instead I got to make money to to learn it. That's incredible. All right, you guys. Well, it's it's coming close to the end of, of today's show. Is there one last thing you all want to share about helping people take the next step? If we can kind of summarize a like clip notes of reminders for people, what is like one reminder you'd love to give people when they're thinking about taking that next step and maybe they're scared or maybe they're anxious, maybe they're unsure of themselves? I would say that there is a dangerous myth that I want to urge you not to fall into. And that's the myth that there is some like wide deep chasm between you and the <clears throat> excuse me and the you know successful people that that may be your role models. And that you know you, you've got to make some giant leap to get across that chasm, and that they've got something that you don't. But that the chasm does not exist. In reality, it's a gentle upward slope, and all it takes is the next step and the next step and the next step, a lot of baby steps, a lot of turtle steps, and you will get there. There is no giant chasm separating you from your role model. Um, I would I would just say inhale exhale inhale exhale I, I love that metaphor um, and and that's with like inspiration that's with 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 learning also right so you can read everything that copy blogger has and know everything about blogging and have never written a blog um, and at the same time you can just put start putting a bunch of stuff out there um, and and be putting out stuff that could probably be better if you were learning a little bit more so just just try and balance your your, you know, like what you take in and 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 what you put out, and um, yeah, and exactly what what Pay said. It's it's slow incremental growth. I mean, no one no one built an empire instantly. I mean, if you look at any of the great entrepreneurs, so you know Richard Branson, for example. Nice, John. I I'd, I'd add to that. You know, when you're so when you're taking those next steps and you're realizing it's just this slope, I just encourage you to as as people are maybe passing you by on that upward slope or as people are you see people further down, to just like try to embrace them with as much love and celebration as you can. Because that's that's gonna inspire you so much more than thinking, Oh god, that person has like better gear than I do and why did why why did they have like this awesome backpack as they're as they're climbing up or you know all this all this bullshit? Try to celebrate other people more, and I think it'll just it'll inspire you, and you'll be the type of person that other people want to cheer on to when you're when you're celebrating uh, others. So that's that's what I'd add add to uh, that uh, advice. Sweet. So, is that a wrap, Jonathan? Do you want to close us yeah, out? Yeah, that's a wrap. Let's let's tell people uh, one more time uh, where where they can view the show. This is happening every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific live. You can go to paidtoexist.com forward slash show. Eventually, uh, we'll probably have a 
a domain name and another and a whole site that you can check out. But for now, bookmark paytoexist.com forward slash show. We're hanging out every Wednesday talking about the raw truth about entrepreneurship with awesome people like Pace. And why don't you, Pace, why don't you tell people where they can, uh, where they can find you online and what, what you love to, uh, you know, have, uh, have shared with, with the, the folks watching this. Yeah, you can find me at paceandkylie.com. And I've got, if you're watching this live, you will know this in time to, for it actually to be useful to you. <laughs> I'm teaching a free teleclass on peaceful motivation that touches on a lot of the topics we talked about in the show, like how to motivate yourself mm. uh, without, try, without just putting your nose to the grindstone. Cool. And you can sign up for that at paceandkylie.com forward slash motivation. Beautiful. We'll, we'll put a link on, on the show page as well for everyone if you want to just uh, click over there. Uh, Mike, where can, where can people find you? Um, you can find me at rostoski.com. And I'm not selling anything right now. I'm just enjoying life and doing a, a lot of play. I will be selling stuff soon, so buy my stuff once I build it. <laughs> Uh, what you what you guys don't see is Mike has this beautiful fireplace in the background, so he could he could totally be uh, you know picking that up right now. Oh. Get to <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, just happened to have a camera crew on board uh, here today. Why don't you step on in? Uh, yeah, so so you can find me at paidtoexist.com. I'm Jonathan Mead. Thank you so much, everyone, for for joining us on this hangout, and you can watch us make more mistakes in the future. Uh, if you're so inclined, and we'll we'll see you next week. Bye, everyone, and we're still.